Greetings and thank you for joining me today. I want to talk about what I see and what I'm concerned about for 2012 and 2013. Now, it's very difficult to make predictions right now. The central planners are heavily involved in the, in the day to day operations of not only our general stock market and commodities, but specific commodities like gold and silver and specific stocks like Bank of America. So I'm not going to try to accurately forecast what will happen to the market. Uh, but I am going to try to accurately forecast on what we're facing and how they will likely react. That is the central planners. Now, I'm calling this the 2012-2013 predictions only because it's possible that they do keep the system propped up for another, you know, 12 months because it is an election year. Now, they have shown a great ability, an amazing ability, one that I could never have forecasted to keep the system propped up since 2008. Uh, and you know, they really started doing everything they could to intervene in the uh, the bubble in the early 2000s. But of course, in 2008, the financial crisis, uh, I would not have thought that we would have made it to 2011 without having another shock to the system. Now, if you look at my very first video I made on March 18th, 2008, I had said that I thought that if we didn't have the housing bubble, that sometime around 2012, the U.S. would go into a depression. But because of the housing bubble, I said that it would start in 2008. And I even said that I thought the Dow Jones at the time, which was over 12,000, would be around 8,000 sometime in the fall of 2008. So I got that one pretty good. That one was pretty dead on. The problem is after, because the central planners are so heavily involved in, in, in stuff you would have never thought they would have been involved in, uh, at least where it comes to, you know, 80, 80, 90 percent of the market now is completely manipulated. Uh, the only thing that, in my opinion, is not manipulated right now, and I guess they're kind of manipulated by default because the, the seniors are being manipulated, but is the is the micro cap or small cap. Uh, companies. I mean, at least, at least they're under the radar of the guys like Goldman Sachs and, of course, the uh, people who are behind the Federal Reserve. So, you know, when you're when you're looking at like, let's say you're going to buy a Dow Jones stock. Let's use Apple for an example. Um, Apple, you know, is probably the closest thing to where you know you've got your media hype when they come out with their earnings and and different new models and stuff. It's a very popular company. I actually, I'm filming this on an Apple computer. Um, I have another uh, Apple laptop. I really enjoy Apple. It's a great, great company. Um, but when you look at it go up and down, it, look, in the, in the end, the overall trend, it mimics the Dow Jones. Okay. And what's the Dow Jones being um, traded on? It's not being traded on, you know, on earnings or expectations or how well the companies are doing in the Dow Jones um, index. It's been traded on what's the Fed going to do next? Is Bernanke at 11.15 Eastern or 2.15 Eastern going to come out and say, uh, you know, more QE, no QE? Uh, is he going to have some other kind of policy uh, that he's going to announce? It's all about what Bernanke is going to say. And that is not, that's not investing. That's gambling. In fact, it's the worst kind of gambling because there's a, there's a human that can, that can, and, and a group of people who can change things. They can change the rules of the game. You're actually better off playing blackjack because in blackjack, there are rules. The dealer can only do certain things. He hits on a soft 17 or he doesn't hit on a soft 17. You know, the, the dealer has rules. There are only a certain amount of cards in the deck. There are certain odds statistically over time that will happen that the house will win. Um, or, or you have a higher chance of winning. But when you're looking at these big monstrous stocks out there, let's like a Bank of America. Look, Bank of America's dead man walking. They ate Countrywide and Merrill Lynch. Okay, that's like swallowing a lot of rat poison if you're a human. Okay, so it's not good. The only thing keeping them alive is the manipulation and the speculative nature that we live in, in where the Fed will come out and say something or Congress does something or doesn't do something more than likely. And that moves the market. It's no, it's not a mark. I don't even know why we call it a market anymore. I guess that's because it's always been called, but in a marketplace, 
you have you have a reasonable expectation of, of goods and services being exchanged for certain values, there is no value. We don't even have a proper measuring stick because we use US dollars. So what I want to talk about, I'm sorry, gosh, sorry, five minute introductory, um, is I believe we're facing some type of deflationary shock to the system, just like we did in 2008. Now there are some, there are some big ones that could happen. Uh, let's start off with the euro. There's, it's, it's highly likely that Greece or another country will eventually get pushed out of the euro or the euro just completely blows up on itself. Now, if that were to happen, you would see a significant dollar rally because people are going to be running from the euro. They're going to be running from that paper that could be worthless or running from that, for running from, uh, you know, they don't want their money in the bank because it could get turned into another currency that could end up being worthless. So they're going to be running to the U.S. dollar. Um, you know, another thing I've, I've got to look at is China. China is in a housing bubble. Um, China's got 64 million real estate units that are vacant right now. They're building ghost cities. Now, you know, a lot of people pointed out how this just proves that they're the ultimate bubble, which right now that's true. But if China is purposely playing the long game, it could be, it could turn to be, turn out to be genius because they are building these ghost cities with $30 silver with, you know, um, $100 oil. And, you know, in 2020, I have no doubt that silver will be in the hundreds of dollars, if not well over a thousand. I have no doubt that oil will be in the hundreds of dollars. So um, if, if you're looking at it from that aspect, maybe China's smart. I mean, I do that at my house. I mean, you can see my garage. You know, I take the money that I have today and I buy as much stuff as I can forward. So if I'm going to use it, uh, let's say uh, mouthwash. If I'm going to use mouthwash and I use it regularly, I want as far out as I can go of that that product. And and same thing with many more products, including food that you can store, like peanut butter or like a jam or like a like rice or dehydrated food. I, I'm going to eat it anyway, right? It's in my cupboard, so I want to buy as much as possible. Could China be doing that? They're saying, well, we're going to need all these cities anyway. Let's get rid of this fiat paper that we can use in the current system to build these things, to get these raw materials. Because though you have strong deflationary forces from the euro crisis, from the Chinese bubble, and from the baby boomers peaking in spending, as, as, as Harry Dent, uh, you know, if anybody's look, ever looked at his research, shows that you're going to have less spending. Now, if you were just to look at that, you'd say deflation. But I think, you know, with, 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 with the aspect of the euro, yes, you could have the dollar rally so you could actually have assets go down. But uh, with China and with uh, the baby boomers, I think the Federal Reserve is going to offset the contraction in spending and the contraction in, you know, the need for resources and commodities with quantitative easing, with printing money. So I think when it comes to the deflationists, I, I agree with everything they say, except I just, in my opinion, in my humble opinion, I'm not saying they're wrong, but I, I honestly think, and, the, and this is where I put my money where my mouth is, um, I honestly think that the Federal Reserve, that the, the inflationists aren't accounting fully for what the Federal Reserve is going to do, because the Federal Reserve is going to do everything they can to prop up the system just as they have from 2008 to 2011. So... If we look at what's happened in 2011, now when does that get out of control? Because remember, a lot of people think hyperinflation and they go, well, wages aren't rising, so how can you have hyperinflation? Inflation is the printing of money. Hyperinflation is, yes, excessive printing of money, but it also means loss of faith in the currency. Now, you can have a loss of faith in the currency without printing an excessive amount, an unbelievable amount of money. Now, I'm going to look at just this, the euro for an example. Yes, they are printing a lot of money causing inflation. But if that thing blows up, it ain't blowing up because they're running the printing presses over time. It's blowing up because the people, the world, is going to have 
a loss of faith in that currency. And there will be a currency crisis and a currency collapse. So that's really my definition of what I see going on in the U.S. Yes, we're going to be printing a lot of money. But during the time of crisis, as people see that the U.S. is going into depression, is in a depression because of a, a collapse in spending, because the middle class is being completely destroyed from way too much government, way too much regulation, and way too much intervention in our in our day to day lives and economy, as they see the economy is being is 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 pretty much not going to be the economy of what they perceived America in the fifties or the eighties, for example, where we were in a boom time. Uh, you know, when they see that, and then when they see our debt past 20 trillion, and I think that's kind of going to be a key round number. When we pass that 20 trillion, I think you're going to start to see the loss of faith in the currency. And that's where we face. So now, in the short term, we could see gold get smashed back into the hundreds of dollars. We could see silver get smashed back into the teens Maybe even lower, hopefully not, because you got to remember, part of it is there's a lot of price suppression in the minerals. I don't have time to go over right now in this video. If you want, you can check GATA.org, GATA.org, or check SGTReport.com. That guy does a great job on covering the precious metals markets. Okay, so look, if they got pushed down, if the economy was somewhat like a 2008, you could see people flood into the metals, physical shortages would happen, physical delays would be insane, and you could see the metals come down and then come right back up. But if it's depression on the headlines and unemployment, real unemployment, goes north of 20%, which is probably around the high teens right now, and the fake unemployment, the official one from the BLS, goes from 8 to whatever, like 12 13%, there just might not be enough people to buy the physical or to buy these assets to cause them to go up. Because remember, it takes a buyer and a seller to move a market. You can have the best stock in the world, but if there's no volume, your stock's not going up. I mean, you could make it go up. I mean, if you, you and your, you and your, uh, you know, you're trading your Ameritrade account and your uh, E-Trade account back and forth. You could make it go up and you, make, you create your own volume, but it's not real growth. It's not real wealth. It's not a real increase. So just to be clear, with no volume, you can't go up. So if people are so poor, if the thing is so obliterated, you, you're not going to see a huge spike up fast. Now, remember, the central banks are not poor. They have endless amounts of cash. All they have to do is print and hit the amount of copies they want of the currency. Okay, so the central banks will absolutely be buying gold at that point because it's going to get crazy. They know the system, the fiat system's over. They're going to they're going to flood into gold. So that could definitely push the gold price up. Uh, you're also going to have a lot of people because they, they're hopeless. Maybe they've prepared. Maybe they bought gold and silver and they're selling their gold and silver because they're so desperate. You know, so. Um, you know, I think what people need to be prepared for and what I am preparing for is a good two years of really hard times. So I'm thinking 2012 to 2015 max, but probably somewhere in the 2013 to 2014 range, the most, the deepest and the most severe part of the depression because we're going to be in hard times for a long time. You know, this is a 15-minute video. I'm going to have to finish part two on the Victory Independence channel. So uh, also, check out futuremoneytrends.com if you're still watching this video. I've written a 26-page inflation report. I am selling it. Um, it also comes with my five, uh, basically the stocks that I'm going to be accumulating for 20, uh, 2000 or 2012. Um, if you're not into that, if you don't want to buy the report, that's fine. Um, if, if, you know, please, but please, you know, just say no thanks or don't say anything at all. I mean, I hate it. it. It's really annoying to me when people go, oh, I love the free market. Go Ron Paul. And then somebody on YouTube tries to sell something like, oh, sell out, man. I hate capitalism. Okay. Anyway, uh, I probably shouldn't have said that. Maybe I'll cut that out. Anyway, go to the Victory Independence channel. Check out part two of this video.